to Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's time for the Big South Baseball Championships. What a fun matchup we have today in the winner's bracket. The Winter Beagles as the three seed and the top seeded Campbell Fighting Camels. Evan Budrovich and Cole Hallam with you this afternoon. You're watching College Baseball here on ACC Network Extra. What a great matchup we have for you here in Raleigh. Two top ten teams batting it out tonight as the Florida State Seminoles take on the NC State Wolfpack. Should be a great matchup. We're delighted to have you with us, Evan Budrovich and Andrew Simpson with you. Andrew, you have two legitimate programs batting it out here tonight. Yeah, two powerhouse ACC schools, you know, top 15 in the country. But You're watching Big South Baseball here on ESPN+. Plus. What a fun series opener we have in store from Jim Perry Stadium. It's the Charleston Southern Buccaneers and the first place Campbell Fighting Camels here in the first of a three-game set. Thank you for joining us as both these teams are back from semester finals and looking to gear up for the final three weeks of the regular season. Evan Budrovich and Jay Sunhalter with you tonight. And Jay, a little bit of time off for both these teams, but a big opener to start this series. Yeah, an opportunity to get rest, get refreshed. NC State now back within two as Vasquez could tie it with one swing. And he might do so. That's a no doubter. And this ball game is back squared at four. Can you tell me what the winning lottery numbers are going to be for tonight? Ricka serves one to right. There's your insurance. The third home run of the day for Campbell. And Ricka makes it seven to four. Two and two on the way. Hard ground ball. That is through. And NC State wins it in walk-off fashion. The hero tonight, it's Tyler McDonough, the breakout freshman in a statement series win over Florida State. So A.J. Recca, who has started every game this year in the outfield. The center fielder trying to add on to this big inning. And he does. Another base hit. Minnick churning for third. Here comes the throw. And it's cut off. First and third again. Trading places with new faces. Campbell up by five. The hitters count now for the 2-1. And Edwards takes a hack at it. Deep to left. All the way to the wall. And that ball is gone. A solo home run for Evan Edwards. And the Wolfpack strike first here on a Friday night in Raleigh. 1-0 NC State. This ball's got some legs into the gap. Raspberry still moving. And into the wall, Zacchaeus Raspberry robbing extra bases. My goodness, what a play to end the top of the fifth. The fastball hits his body. And Seth Johnson controlling his rubber and holding down the fort to keep the lead. So here's a look at the tournament MVP from last season in Matthew Barefoot. He's a local kid, grew up in Dunn, North Carolina, about 30 minutes here from Fayetteville. And a chance to make a statement here on Friday with a trip to the finals on the line. These Winter Beagles, they're the best fielding team in the league. So a good contrast as these two set to face. And Thad Harris working ahead against Barefoot. You look at those numbers, very impressive. Earning Barefoot first team all conference honors. And he made a statement to open up this tournament, a base hit on the second pitch he saw. He had three hits in yesterday's win. He, he continues to make statements as he moves throughout his career, and he's not your typical leadoff hitter with all the power that he possesses, but he's a great starting point, and he really getting, giving Thad Harris a tough time here. That's a tough batter to start your game off with. Thad Harris faced Campbell in that series down at Rock Hill. He went four and a third, gave up five runs, but his Winter Beagles picked up the win. Not always barefoot have good numbers. He had success against Harris when these teams met in Rock Hill. But Thad coming off a win in his last start, bringing the 2-2. Barefoot right to second, and that's Brandon Fight all over it for out number one. That's a good fastball right there from Thad Harris, touching it out on the outside black. 
Uh, Barefoot does a good job. He's such a complete field hitter. He's able to go backside. He's able to pull down the ball down the line right there. You see him punch the line drive over to Brendan fight, but nothing to show for it there. And uh, Thad Harris is off and running. So here's a look at one of the six seniors on this Campbell roster. This is Tyler Anshaw. And he's being aggressive on the first pitch. Anshaw and the Camels. He had four runs and three RBI yesterday. Very productive day in the two spot. Harris back to work and the count is even. Thad Harris, a pitcher who overcame some struggles himself last year, only made two appearances all of last season, but he's back and healthy, making his impact in the rotation. For Tyler Anshaw, a key cog in Campbell's tournament win last season. And this is a kid who started games at first, second, and third base this year. Very versatile for Justin Harris' club. He is. He's a great team player. You got him slotted up there in the two hole now. And as you speak to, he's so good on defense that you just find a way to keep him in the lineup. You know he's going to produce for you. Harris back to the fastball, and that's in the left field. The first hit of the day for the Camels. And it comes by way of their senior in Tyler Anshaw. And he shows off his offensive prowess right there. That's a two strike poke. And right here, he gets a ball in the outer corner. Just flips his hands at it, trying to put the ball in play with two strikes. That's a great job of not giving away the bat there, continuing to battle, get something going for this Campbell offense. So Anshaw with his eighth hit against the Winthrop Eagles this year. He's been red hot against Winthrop. And now the shortstop you mentioned coming in, Luis Jimenez. He was also on the first team all conference. And now Thad Harris with his work cut out for him. One thing you always come to expect with Winthrop, good starting pitching. Last year they led the league in ERA. This year they're third. And Tom Regina's his club always going to compete on the hill. Look over there to Tyler Anshaw on this running game, Cole. 91 stolen bases for Campbell. They're going to be aggressive. They can run. That's something they pride themselves on is being able to get the extra 90 feet. And, uh, you know, they're, they're hit by pitch guys. They're stolen base guys. They're kind of blue collar work hard guys. So you're going to see them out there trying to take that extra bag throughout the game. And a big reason why Fat Harris is picking over a good amount in this ball game. There's Justin Hare, the head coach for Campbell. Just picked up his 150th career win earlier this week. And now for Harris, a lot going through your mind with a speedy team in this Campbell offense. He saw them just score 20 runs yesterday. Of course, a new ball game, but that's a daunting task for any pitcher. It is. You got an offense that comes in here about about as hot as they can get, and you got some runners that are going to try and disrupt your timing. So, anytime you have those two factors, that can play, you know, big impact on Thad Harris's mindset. He's going to have to tone it down, and uh, you know, try to erase those things from his memory and go right at him. Anshaw off from first, and that pitch is called outside. Luis Jimenez so patient at the plate, but when he swings it. There's a lot of pop. He had three hits and four RBI in yesterday's win. Harris back to the plate. He's falling behind him. It is at three and one. So we mentioned Thad Harris, who missed most of last season. He was a full time starter as a sophomore and Right back in the role here this year. This is his 13th start of the year, but none may be tougher than this Campbell offense. Jimenez on with the walk. And Campbell, a quick rally here in the first. A big walk there for Luis Jimenez. We've seen how hard it is to get on base. Hitting is hard, is what they say. So anytime you start to give away free passes, if if the prior games in this tournament mean anything, we've seen a lot of those free passes come around and score, and offensive take, offenses take advantage of those opportunities. So Grant Thad Harris is going to have to tone it down, get back in the zone, and try to not be uh, overwhelmed by the moment. This Winthrop staff, the second fewest walks issued in the league. 
They have been strike throwers year in and year out under Tom Reginas. And now a tough task. This is the DH Spencer Packard. Remember, these teams just met two weeks ago. Packard had a home run down in Winthrop. That's one of his two big flies on the year. And now looking to give his team a quick strike in this first inning. And you see that shortstop, Tyler Baker, right behind the hand of Ann Shaw. Definitely on the mind of the Winthrop Beagles how aggressive Campbell's going to be. It is, and a lot of teams wouldn't be as much in a running situation now with first and second, but Campbell's a team that likes to do the double steal. They always like to move and uh, enforce motion, so they're very aware of Campbell's tendencies. Certainly a perk of playing a team just within a couple of weeks, and now meeting here for a trip to Championship Saturday. Packard lays off. And now behind on the count, the junior college transfer. And of Tucson, Arizona, taking on the senior lefty. Plenty of experience from Calhoun, Georgia. Now the one-two to Packard. Spencer able to fight it off, and he'll see another. One thing we've seen from this Campbell offense all year long, Cole, is forcing starting pitchers out of the game early in terms of taking counts and working the count. Something they're looking to do here today. They do. They've got an exceptional eye. There's a lot of walks throughout their lineup. And right there, as you've seen Spencer, Spencer Packer do foul pitches off. That's going to be big for them is spoiling good pitchers' pitches. Gets a good pitch this time, and it's fair. Rolling down the line, and Campbell strikes first. Here comes Anshaw to score. And a 1-0 lead on the RBI double. What a great job by Spencer Packard. We saw the ball he reached for, fouled away on the outside corner, worked his way into a better count. Here you're going to see the, the fastball in the inside corner. He's able to get his hands through it, pulls it down the right field line, and Campbell's off and running, picks up a double and an RBI. So Anshaw scores early in this first inning, and for Packard, his 14th double of the year, and what an ideal start for this Campbell offense that just scored 20 runs yesterday. You're exactly right, and not only did he pick up the RBI, but he situated his team in a great position here with runners on second and third, one out. It's a great opportunity to be able to produce another run or two. Here's Colin Wolf at the plate. The chance to cash in a couple of his Camel teammates. And now if you're Thad Harris, trying to minimize the damage in this first inning, Wolf, a second team all conference slugger this past year. He is also from the junior college routes. One of 17 first year Juco players here for this Campbell team. Good pitch in there for strike one to Wolf. Exceptional power numbers for Colin this year, and he's been a nice addition in his first year with the program. He has, and we talked a little bit earlier about Tyler Anshaw's defensive prowess. He's able to move to different positions, and Colin Wolf's a kid we saw start the year off at second base, now moved his way over to third and found himself a pretty nice home over there. Couple runners on now for Wolf here in this first inning. And he drills this ball out of play. Wolf, a two for five effort in yesterday's game, but he kick started that five run first inning with a double. And now trying to spark his offense here against the Winthrop Eagles, who come in one of the better pitching staffs in this league. And now as Wolf steps out, not going through the mind of Thad Harris, the redshirt junior, making his 13th start of the year. Wolf trying to hold up, and he does. Says Jamie Roebuck, the first base umpire, so the at-bat continues. That's a good pitch there by Thad Harris, going with the breaking ball in the dirt, looking for his strikeout here with runners in scoring position, and with an open bag, I would expect him to try to pitch just outside the zone here and continue looking for that strikeout. Wolf staying alive with Packard over there at second, and Jimenez now at third base. Gets a pitch he can drive. And that is caught by Hunter Lipscomb. 
Here comes Jimenez, and he scores. 2-0, Campbell as the throw gets away, and the sack fly adds on to the lead. Another example of this Campbell offense working their way through at bats. Carl Wolf is able to lay off the breaking ball in the dirt there, get something that he can handle a little bit better in the zone, and he pokes it out to right field, does a perfect job, picks up his sack fly, another RBI, and this Campbell's, Campbell's up too. You see Pat Harris now climbing towards 20 pitches in this first inning. This is the exact M.O. that Winthrop had concerns coming in. Not in much bullpen depth as the Camels and already a long first inning. Here's Kobe Collins, the first baseman, trying to add on to this two-run spot. Collins had a career-high day yesterday. Five RBI, a couple of runs scored, and a big fly in the win. Harris searching for answers, and that's a nice response to even up the count. There's a look at Tom Reginas in his ninth year with this Winthrop program. He's got a battle-tested team, but they're falling behind here in this first inning. Collins turns on a pitch, and this ball is out of here. His second home run in two days. And Campbell cooking with a 4 nothing lead. And what a time to get hot for Kobe Collins there. Got his big fly yesterday as he spoke to. And right here gets another pitch up in the zone. Doesn't miss it. Drives it out of the yard. Out there to left field. Collins and the Camels coming out swinging here in the first. And take a look at this swing. That's beautiful work on a fastball up in the zone. That's exactly what a hitter with his kind of pop is looking for. A pitch up that he can drive. And right there gets the hands through. And it looks like he knew it right after he got it. So Campbell, their third home run here in this tournament. And boy, the top seed coming out swinging. And here's a look at the pitching coach, Austin Hill, heading out there to talk to Thad Harris. Thad did a nice job getting out of some trouble, but when you leave a pitch up like that, it's going to disappear quickly. Well, Thad's thrown some good pitches. His big problem is he's had some bad misses. Right there you saw the fastball down the middle of the plate, made the mistake to Colin Wolf with two strikes. And, uh, you know, he's able to capitalize on that one. So it's not necessarily that he's that off. He's just got to fix a couple of those pitches and, and fix his misses. Thad Harris coming off a very good start to end the regular season. Five and a third, just one run. But, boy, the pressure of the magnified start really amps up from the end of the regular season here to your start in the postseason. It does, and any time you're competing in the regular season, that's great. But what we've seen so far is when you get into tournament play, anything can happen. Stakes are high. These teams' adrenaline is through the roof. So we've seen a little bit of that. And this game's not over yet, though, for Thad Harris. If he can tone it down, he's got the offense to keep his team in the game. Two outs now for Grant Harris, the right fielder. And this Campbell lineup keeps turning over. They scored five runs in the first yesterday. Four runs already here off of Thad Harris. And now Grant Harris shoots one to right. This ball's got a chance, and see you later. His fourth home run of the season, and it's a 5 nothing lead. And Grant Harris has shown us some of his power throughout the years, and right here, he knows they've got a pitcher on the ropes in Thad Harris. They've been doing big things offensively. Gets another miss over the heart of the plate, and gets around on it, drives it out of here to right field. What a beautiful swing here, right on time, ready to hit. Boy, the home runs in this ballpark have come in a flurry. Nine home runs yesterday, and already two here in the first inning. Weather heating up, and the bats are following suit. They absolutely are. This is a big ballpark, too, so to see a couple balls get out of here by that distance is very impressive. Pat Harris giving up two dangers in the first inning, and boy, Zach Minnick taking a healthy cut for his first swing. Hitting's contagious, and these guys with a couple home runs got their team fired up, and I think everybody right now is chomping at the bit to get another at bat. Minnick may be the hottest hitter on this Campbell team as of late. He went three for four yesterday and had four RBI in the bottom of the order. He goes after the 0-1, serves it into the gap, and that ball's got the wall written all over it. McFall's back in, but not before a stand-up double 
And that's three straight extra base hits. It is, and Thad Harris' world is swirling a little bit. You spoke to how hot Minnick is. He's a kid that got off to a slow start, but has been so good for this Campbell team over the last four years. Good to see him rolling here. Gets the ball, another ball out of the plate. A little bit low and away, but he does such a great job of hitting all fields right there, extending the hands, punching that ball out into right center, picking up a double, and, and continuing the hot times for this Campbell offense. Zach Minnick, the senior, knows how important this moment is, and he is pounding his chest with some excitement. So another runner in scoring position. And out of the nine spot near this is A.J. Recca. And it's Thad Harris getting himself into some trouble. Already action in the bullpen for the Eagles. And that's Tyler Jones, the freshman getting loose, is Winthrop already having to get some action ready. Harris to the breaking ball, and Ricka smokes it out of play. There are not too many swings where Campbell's missing the baseball. No, it looks like these hitters know exactly what's coming. That's not that bad of a breaking ball, but to see another pitch just hammered, I mean, they're not missing barrels at all. So Ricka trying to continue a five-run inning on five hits. And Zach Menick over there in scoring position. Pat Harris, the redshirt junior, looking for answers. So Ricka and the Camels coming alive here in this first inning. Already four extra base hits in the first. And now Ricka tries to add to it. And he goes down swinging to end the inning but not before the power bats of the Camels come alive. A couple of home runs. First by Kobe Collins turning a quick lead. And then Grant Harris follows suits right after. It's 5-0 Campbell through one here on ESPN+. Plus. Let's give you a little game recap of what's been cooking so far. A five-run first for Campbell. A couple of home runs to get things started. Yeah, they've, they've lived via the long ball today. They've got, they haven't been able to get a lot going, but when they have, they've been able to poke one over the wall. It's been the Mike Salvatore show tonight. A single, a triple. Let's keep it going with a double. And the home run in the eighth, a cycle for Salvatore. And Florida State up three here through seven and a half. Bailey drives it right. And caught on the line. What a game-saving catch there by Albert. Vasquez gets the NC State Wolfpack back within two on this clutch RBI double. But that's all so far. 7-5 as we head to the ninth on ACC Network. And now Julian Blackburn's trying to send Campbell to the championship final. Strike three called. And for the seventh time in program history, Campbell is on to the Big South Championship game. Your final score, Campbell 13, Winthrop 5. It was some clutch pitching from Blackburn and big time hitting down the stretch to win it.